Um, and the, the Mehdevis uh, used um, uh, quite a lot of Kariboli, but uh, that is uh, rather, again, linked much more to Gujarat. And also Malva used Kariboli, again, what I would li uh, link uh, rather to Gujri. But let's see the north itself. It is the Mughals to whom the earliest documented Rechta can be attributed, and its author is none other than Emperor Babur. His Turkish divan, preserved in a manuscript dated from 1529, includes a couplet partly in Kariboli Hindi, partly in Persian, and partly in Turkish. And the couplet might be known to uh, uh, many of us. This is a very famous couplet, which uh, the interesting thing is that uh, Babur's language, it, uh, it shows Babur's language, that he rhymes moti with roti. Now, the, 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 uh, this would be a mistake in later poetry, but it seems that Ma Babur, coming from outside, didn't really bother about ta and ta, and uh, made rhyme moti with roti. This is the earliest documented use of kariboli in a poem in the north. And uh, that's uh, in a manuscript in 1529. Uh, Babur, there is a manuscript of Babur's divan dated from 1515, which is in Paris. In that divan, this poem is not there. So what can be suspected is that Babur wrote it after being acquainted with India, and it is already there in uh, 1529. Um, <coughs> also, the interesting thing is that uh, it has a mixture of kariboli also, it has got Persian, Havasi Maniko Moti, and also it has got Turki, Fakar Ehli Ga Bas Bulgusidur, Pani or Oti. So, Muchko Nahua Kuch Havas E Maniko Moti, that's clear. Fakar Ehli Ga. Ehli Fakiron Ke Lie Bas Bulgusidur, Bas Hoga, Ya Bas Hogi, Pani or Oti. After Babur, there is not much dated early manuscript evidence for Rekta in the north for more than a century. The most important manuscript is the album, the Bayaz, uh, written by Jaimal Tal in 1652-56, uh, uh, which contained Jafar's Rekta that was later attributed to Husro. Apart from Persian compositions, this album contains poetry in the mixed language by several poets, as can be known from the pen names, Jamali, Faizi, Bayram, Jani, Sedan, Fateh Muhammad, Jafar, and an unknown author. With the exception of Fateh Muhammad, all these authors produced macaronic poetry, macaronic meaning half line in a half a language or a, a, a partially in one language, partially in another language. Um, one poem later attributed to Khusro is in Persian, but two words can be read as a pun and be interpreted as rechta. Guftam gahe dar khana ye mamun e tu basham. Gufta kidar in khana bala ist mamani. Um, sorry, I'm not able to read metrically, but um, uh, the English translation would be I said that I would be for a while in your uh, safe house. She said that calamity resides in this house, don't stay. And reading it with the Indian meaning meaning of the words Mamun and Mumani. I said that I would be for a while in the house of your uncle. She said that her aunt was a calamity in that house. So you can get a double meaning if you, uh, if you uh, take two Persian words as Hind uh, Hindavi words. Um, this virtuosity is very uh, typical of Mughal times. Um, now, as can be judged from the names in Jaimal's album, uh, Jamali, Faizi, Bayram, uh, both, well, Bayram is a Mughal name, it's a Turkish uh, origin, and probably uh, it must be Bayram Khan, although we cannot uh, say with uh, uh, certainty there might be other Bayrams uh, coming from the, uh, with the Mughals. Um, uh, also, there is Faizi, and uh, one is tempted to think of the great Persian poet Faizi, experimenting with Rekta. Um, Dr. 
Though the above attributions to Bayram and to whichever Faizi remain somewhat uncertain, and we cannot exclude later appropriations of a famous author's name, as was the case with Husro, the identification of Faizi and Bayram with Mughal noblemen would fit well into the syncretistic picture of the Mughal court. Uh, especially Akbar was um, uh, the most syncretistic of uh, all the Mughal rulers, uh, uh, searching for a fusion in architecture, in, uh, in painting. Mughal painting uh, emerged as a, a fusion of uh, Hindustani, Persian, and even uh, European painting. So it, uh, this kind of uh, idea of a mixed language would again fit into Akbar's idea that uh, you can run an empire of various people if you put a little bit of each into the running of the empire. Um, Um, as Babur's example showed, using Turkey, it was not only Persian that was cast against Hindavi in Rechta poems. The experimenting spirit at Akbar's court is attested in the macaronic poems attributed to Abdurrahim Khan Khanan Rahim. Um, he mixed Kariboli with Sanskrit and used not the ghazal, but the quatrain form in Sanskritic meters. Um, most of the Rechta poetry was uh, using, uh, uh, using Persian or uh, basically Arabic meters, but uh, Abdurrahim Khan Khanan experiment with, experimented with the Sanskritic meter, uh, Malini, and also with Shardula Vikriyadita. So um, let me just quote a few lines. Ekasmin diva sava sana samaye me tha gaya bhag me kachit tatra kuranga bala nayana gula torati thi khadi ta drishtva navayauvanam shashimukhim me mohme japada no jivami vinatvaya shrinu priye tu yar kese mile so it's uh, Sanskrit and Hindavi. It seems that um, uh, the experimenting uh, spirit uh, went over to Sanskrit. And uh, the most interesting example of Rechta is again attributed to um, uh, Abdul Rahim Khan Khanan. Um, this time, um, um, uh, there is a poem of four lines written in Sanskrit, Braj, Gujarati, Marathi, Rajasthani, Kariboli, Punjabi, Persian, Arabic, and Telugu. Bharta prachim gato me, Sanskrit. Bahurina bagare, Braj. Shunkarun re have hum, Gujarati. Manji karmachi goshthi, Marathi. Ab punashanasi, I don't know what language it is, and uh, I will be very grateful if someone could uh, direct me. Ab punashanasi. Uh, Gant dholo nai the Rajasthani, Mahari tira sunera Rajasthani, Kharach bahut hai, Khadi boli, Ihara tabararo, again I am lost, Dithi tendi dilondi, Punjabi, Ishq ilfida, it's Arabic or Persian, Odipo vachunnadu, Telugu. Um, so I try to translate it into English, but uh, this linguistic uh, abundance is lost. My husband went east, Bharta Prachim Gato Me, and is not coming back, Bahurina Bagade. What shall I do now? Shunkarun Re Havehun. This is my fate, Manjhi Karmachi Goshthi. Please listen, Abapun Shanasi. I do not have a coin in my purse, Gantha Dholo Nainte. Listen to me. Mahari tira sunera, the expenses are high. Kharach uh, bahut hai. Ihara tabar aru, and there are many in the family. Dithi tendi dilondi, in order to see him, ishq alfida, I sacrifice my heart for love. Odipo vachinnadu, it is he who is coming. All the rekta surveyed in this section, apart from Babur's couplet, and possibly of Sakka, Muayyad, and Mashhadi are preserved in later manuscripts. Yet the relative abundance of Macaronic Rekta from the 16th century makes it difficult to question their authenticity on the same grounds as, we, uh, as it was done with uh, Baba Farid, Amir Khusro, uh, or Namdev. Uh, now, I'm 
would like to consider for a moment um, motives uh, for linguistic hybridity. As I have mentioned, it can be a syncretistic agenda uh, of the Mughals to kind of uh, uh, create, uh, create an empire which is a melting pot. And this melting pot aspect would be expressed in uh, every aspect of life, in language, in, uh, in arts, and even in religion. Although uh, modern research has questions on, uh, on the Dini Ilahi, but still uh, just the mention that uh, Akbar experimented with a fusion of religions is, uh, uh, is interesting. Um, <clears throat> now, the use of um, vernacular for female voice can be, uh, was put forward in an argument by a, um, a scholar um, in America, um, Shantanu Pukan, uh, who argued on the basis of works such as the Bikat Kahani in the north and uh, Marcia by Sauda that Hindi was perceived by Mughal elite male authors as especially effective in moving emotions and was embedded in Persian or Persian at Urdu to invoke domestic female tone as opposed to the male and non-domestic female world of the Ghazals. So uh, what is this argument of uh, Shantanu Pukan? And it seems to gain a uh, uh, wider ground, is that uh, the Mughals uh, uh, did not educate women as much as they educated men. So women would use Hindavi in their world, and men would uh, switch to Persian or High Urdu uh, in the early Mughal times. Um, and when uh, people, um, when you are young children and you are surrounded uh, by uh, women in the Zenana, somehow Hindavi um, uh, strikes chords with your uh, early childhood and with intensive emotions. Whenever later you hear Hindavi, although you got out of this world, you uh, feel uh, an extreme emotion towards Hindavi, although you don't expected, uh, you don't accept Hindavi as a language of learning. So the situation would be a little bit similar to, um, uh, to many places in modern India that uh, many people would ex uh, accept uh, English as their language of learning and Hindi or uh, their local language would use for domestic purposes. Um, <coughs> now, I have found something would, uh, which would uh, somehow reinforce this argument I am not uh, say I am not in favor or against this argument. I am just presenting this argument as uh, Hindavi within the world of Persian as the female voice. But um, there is a um, <coughs> there is a narrative poem um, uh, attributed to uh, Ishki Khan uh, in the 16th century. He is claimed to have died in 1582. Although I wasn't uh, able to find any further reference to him. Um, uh, Ishki Khan is, uh, <coughs> um, is claimed uh, to be a descendant of the Turkish spiritual guide Ismail Tash and was the Mir Munshi during Akbar's reign and authored a Persian divan. In his Persian Qasida, Sardo Garmi Zamana, he used some Hindi and Turkish couplets. And uh, these were published uh, in 1931. So, <coughs> um, um, Ishki Khan um, describes how the Turkish, Tajik, and Indian wives of a wealthy Jagirdar talk in Turkish, Persian, and in Hindi, respectively. This is, for example, the, the Qasida is in Persian. This is, for example, how uh, the, Jamindar, the Zamindar is received by his Hindustani wife on his return home. Zani Hindi ziyak taraf guyad. Hun tiri londi tu mira khandgar tum jo mujhko pyar karte ho hum bhi karti hu tihara pyar apne kothe pe main bichhau palang us upar let jio paon pasar beech tu let londian chaugird harman aas pas tum bachkar and the more interesting thing is what happens if the husband is a poor one zan e hindi ziyak taraf guyad teri maa goli tera baap chamar jhoot tujhte bahut suna main bahut suna mat bol sach tera ho kaho mera mat maar tujhte mujhko na roti o paani tujhte mujhko nahi sawad o singar 
अब न रहू तिरे खुदा की सौ निकलूंगी तिहारे घर थे बहार Um, this is in, uh, in the middle of a Persian Qasida, and when the women speak, they would speak in their mother tongue, not, uh, not uh, in Persian, but in Turkey, or only the, uh, the Tajik wife would uh, speak in uh, Persian. Um, now, an interesting thing about um, uh, the Sufis' attitude towards Hindi during the Sultanate period. Um, <coughs> For example, we have already uh, come across Faki Madho's uh, opinion that Sheikh, um, uh, uh, Sheikh Ahmad uh, Nehrawani was wasting his time on Hindavi songs. We can see a more straightforward condemnation of Hindavi in the discourses of Sheikh uh, Sharfuddin Maneri, who died in 1381, who once forbade the singing of a Hindavi chakri, saying that chakri is found on the lips of women It is a very free sort of thing. There were also some young men in the assembly. Can you tell me where one would all acquire the power uh, to bear such things? Confusion would result for melodious songs are as enchanting as adultery. For that reason, it was forbidden. At another musical gathering, where after some Persian songs, the minstrels had switched to Hindavi, Maneri said, Hindavi compositions are very forthright and frank in expression. In purely Persian verses, there is a judicious blend of allusion and what can be fittingly expressed, whereas Hindavi employs very frank expressions. There is no limit to what it expl explicitly reveals. It is very disturbing. It is extremely difficult for young men to bear such thing. So you can um, even perceive as a kind of elderly generation Uh, frowning at some new fashion, that uh, there are the Sufis who's in whose gathering there are Arbi and Persian singing, and somehow uh, young men are fond of Hindavi and they condemn it. Um, but Maneri's condemnation seems to have been of no avail since Hindavi words and verses begin to appear in the Persian writings of his followers, especially in those of Muzaffar Shams Balkhi. Um, Now, let me just uh, skip um, uh, most of my paper, and let me come to one very important example, which has not been known um, neither to, um, uh, uh, to uh, Jafar and, uh, uh, and Gyan Chan Jain, uh, nor to Shamsur Rahman Faruqi, and that is the genre of writing Rechta in the Nagari script. So not in the Urdu script, but in the Nagari script. There was Rekta and Kariboli in the Nagari script. And the earliest example I could locate is by the Hindu or whatever Sant poet. Probably he wouldn't have called himself Hindu, but something between Hindu and Muslim. The Sant poet Dadu Dayal, who lived between 1544 and 1603, so more or less contemporary of Akbar. And he not only used elements from different languages or dialects with confidence, but wrote poems in Rajasthani, Gujarati, Braj Bhasha, Punjabi, Persian, and Sindhi. Now, just to quote the example of uh, Dadu Dayal, and this is documented um, in a manuscript, not from his lifetime, but shortly after his lifetime, from 1636, in the, in the Nagari script. Allah tera jikar fikar karte hai, Asak mustak tere tarase tarasi marte hain. Khalak khes digaranes baithe din bharte hain. Daim darbari tere ghair mahal darte hain. Tan sahid man sahid rati divas ladte hain. Gyan tera dhyan tera isak aagi jadte hain. Jan tera jand tera paun sir dharte hain. Dadu divan tera jara kharid ghar ke hain. So this uh, is how uh, Urdu or Kariboli sounded when a sound poet used it. It is very similar to the language of Bikat Kahani and uh, to the language written down in the uh, Urdu script. And from Dadu Dayal onwards, you will find examples of uh, Urdu or Rehta written down in the Nagari script. Now, no scholar has studied Rekta in the Nagari script. Urdu scholars would neglect it because uh, most of the Urdu scholars, unfortunately, 
uh, do not read uh, much uh, in the Nagari script. Um, Hindi scholars would uh, not be interested in it because um, um, <coughs> uh, somehow it doesn't fit very well into a history of Hindi literature. Uh, especially, uh, Richta in the Nagari script went on for centuries after Dadu Dayal. And uh, you would find um, uh, excellent examples um, uh, by poets like Nagri Das or uh, uh, Brajnidhi, Brajbhasha poets, who wrote in Rechta, um, <coughs> or Vajid. Uh, Vajid was um, a follower of Dadu Dayal. It is said that he was a Pathan who sort of converted into the Sant religion of uh, Dadu Dayal. And he would write uh, poems like this. Dilki dilasa sari duniki tamasa kul gamka karar duni dekhen jis ub hai vaki muhabbati dekhen khater mein yon kyon aave alam ki sahibi to aisi jaisi dub hai rag khub, rang khub, aankhen khub, bhoonhen khub, haus khub, haansi khub, safa kaisi khub hai umar ki khubi par khalak ki khalak ki yaar hua Kon kon khubi kahun khub mehboob hai. This was written in the Nagari script, and I have found a manuscript of this dating from 1651. So there was a kind of rechta. Uh, I don't call it Urdu because at that time it was shared. So it is a kind of shared Hindavi Urdu, the same language written in the Urdu script and also in the Nagari script uh, already in the 17th uh, century. And uh, also, the name Urdu became prevalent after Urdu became the Zabani Urdu e Mualla, when it was ex accepted as a court language. And Urdu means status. While Rechta, coming from the Persian root Rechtan, kind of uh, poor dot, I, th I feel that there is some kind of, uh, uh, kind of um, um, lack of acknowledgement for the status when you say Rechta when you say, uh, in comparison uh, to Zabane Urdu e Mualla, just the highest language. So when Rechta becomes Zabane Urdu e Mualla, uh, that at that time it must be in the Urdu script, it must use uh, Persian vocabulary, and its ideology has been uh, well uh, uh, worked out in the mid-18th uh, century in Delhi. Um, <coughs> um, so, um, let me just conclude. One uh, thing that I am claiming that anything, uh, any claim uh, to the use of Kariboli for literary, written literary purposes before Babur is suspicious or more than suspicious. And many of these poems claimed to be written by early poets, in fact, belong to the Mughal times, were written by other poets and their names were changed into more famous poets. The first written example of uh, Kariboli in a literary environment is Babur's couplet. The language that the Muslims used before the Mughal times, uh, if they used Hindavi, they would use uh, either Avadhi as Maulana Daud's Chandayan or the other uh, Avadhi uh, Sufi romances, or they would use a language uh, close to Brajbhasha, as did Kabir or as did Abdus Kud Abdul Kudus uh, Gangohi, uh, who wrote under the pen name Alaknath. Uh, and that was very close to Brajbhasha, but not Kariboli uh, during the Sultanate period. Now, um, the rise of mixed poetry, Rechta, uh, Rechta has several meanings, but uh, in this talk I was uh, using only one meaning of Rechta, uh, kind of mixed uh, poetry, um, is linked to the Mughal court's uh, efforts of uh, syncretism. And <coughs> very, um, and it, there were various Mughals uh, whom, although we cannot be certain, but so many names emerge from Akbar's time to be linked to the use of Rechta and of Kariboli that uh, it's very difficult to deny. So they are not simply one off or one or two poets at a time, but really five, 10 poets. Uh, uh, so it is very probable that by that time, uh, uh, Rechta was prevalent. 
uh, we have Rechta manuscripts uh, in a higher number from the 17th century, so from Jahangir and uh, Shah Jahan's uh, time. Also, the Rechta experiments were not limited to Hindi and Persian, but also uh, some people like Abdul Rahim Khan -e Khanan experimented with other languages. And furthermore, the Mughal experiments were copied by sons and Hindus like Dadu Dayal, who produced literature in the Nagari script. And something very important for the Hindi speakers, what we can learn from this is that these examples are also the earliest examples of Kariboli written in the Nagari script. So when uh, many people say that Kariboli written in the Nagari script started only in Fort William College, it is not true. It is there already uh, in the 17th century uh, documented and one can suspect that it was there at the time of Dadu Dayal in the late 16th century, so at Akbar's time. This is what uh, we can document. But for Hindi speakers, the interesting thing is that this Kariboli that was written in the uh, Persian script was full of Perso-Arabic vocabulary. For example, Tera me didar divana, ghari ghari tujhe dekha chahu, sun sahib rehmana, hua alamast khabar nahi tan ki piya prem piyala. Thadha hoon tu giri giri parta, tere rang matwala, khara rahun darbar tumhare, jyon ghar ka banda jada. So, there was nothing like shuddh Hindi, Sanskritized Hindi. When Hindi began, it was very close to, uh, to Urdu. It was not so much, uh, so much uh, Persianized maybe as the uh, high Urdu uh, from the 18th century, but it was Persianized. And these are the earliest examples of Hindi. Uh, <coughs> and this kind of Hindi rekta, writing Kariboli in the Nagari script, with Persianized vocabulary went up to the time of Bharatin Duharish Chandra. Even a generation before Bharatin Duharish Chandra, we find Rechta literature in Hindavi. But Bharatin Duharish Chandra was inimical towards Urdu. He must have known about Rechta writing in uh, the Nagari script, but he never mentions that this thing exists. Bharatin Duharish Chandra was very much in favor of dividing Hindi from Urdu. There were many others who are uh, uh, kind of uh, agents in the division. But Bharatin Duharish Chandra was the agent who simply uh, let Rechta literature in the Nagari script uh, being forgotten. And after that, no Rechta is known. Only very few scholars uh, uh, know about Rechta. I do not know about any study of Rechta literature in the Nagari script written in Hindi or in any other languages. So it has been forgotten and it had to be uh, dug up from uh, various libraries and archives. And in the past five or six years, I was traveling throughout North India and I find uh, Nagari Rechtas in abundance, never studied by anyone with the exception of the Ishq Daryao by, uh, uh, by an 18th century poet that was studied uh, uh, by uh, the late Kishori Lal Gupta and the book, uh, book, a small booklet appeared only two years ago. Apart from that, no uh, survey of uh, Nagari Rechta exists. So uh, <coughs> I think, just to conclude, that uh, the early roots of um, Kariboli literature uh, are shared between Hindi and Urdu and the uh, race for the early poets was a kind of race during the uh, uh, nationalist period of the emergence of uh, the Indian freedom movement or, um, uh, <coughs> uh, and on both sides, both the Hindu and the Muslim sides of the freedom movement, they, uh, the literary historians wanted to show that our language is more ancient than yours. In fact, Kariboli, जो हम आजकल बोलते हैं, चाहे वो हिंदी हो या उर्दू हो, असल में हमारे लिए मुगलों की देन है।